Right, well, we've got the basic integration tools, haven't we? So uh, let's, let's start looking at um, some fairly nasty looking examples here and see how we, we work these out. Um, in a similar way to differentiation, you proceed term by term. So our first one, which is a, a cubic, we work our way along uh, term by term using the rule for integration. And then we try and tidy the whole thing up. And often that's the, the bit that people actually find the most difficult. So the first one, integrating x cubed is x to the 4 over 4. Notice I didn't mention the 3 because the integration part is really all to do with the powers of x. So we worry about the other numbers afterwards. Integrating x squared is x cubed over 3. Integrating x is x squared over 2. And finally, integrating 5 gives us 5x. And of course, plus c. And we're lucky with this one, aren't we? Because if you look carefully at this, none of this simplifies, none of the fractions cancel. So I'm happy that, that that's the answer, and that's as good as it gets. OK, now let's move on to number two. Now it's a little bit more tricky, and there's all sorts of things going on here. And you certainly can't integrate this one straight away. So let's have a look at what we should do to this. 4 over x squared. Well, we write that as 4x to the minus 2 plus 3 times the square root of x x to the half. Now, this is something to watch out for. Um, also, careful with my writing here, which isn't always very good. Um, that's actually meant to be x times the square root of x, not the x root of x. That would be hideous to integrate. So this is really 2 over x root x. So let's just have a look at x root x. That's x times x to the half, which is, of course, x to the 1 and a half, or x to the 3 over 2. And it's on the bottom line, so it will become a negative power. And we can pop it up there as a negative 3 over 2. And that's it. Now we're ready to go. And this one will get a little bit more challenging x to the minus 2. Add 1 to the power is minus 1. Divide by the new power. Plus x to the half. Add 1 to the power. Now, that's 1 and a half, but we don't like mixed fractions. So it's 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2. Minus twice. Add 1 to negative 1 and a half is negative a half. So we're dividing here by negative a half. And finally, plus c. That is the correct answer. But certainly you'll be asked to simplify your answer and you wouldn't get away with that. Now you've got to be confident and good with fractions, I'm afraid. There's no way around this. I'm dividing by negative 1. OK, that's easy. That makes that negative 4. And it's multiplied by x to the negative 1, which is, of course, 1 over x. So the x goes on the bottom, only the x. The negative power only belongs to x. 4 stays where it is. Now, 3 divided by 3 over 2. How do we divide by a fraction? We turn it upside down and multiply. So we're actually going to do 3 times 2 thirds. Well, that's nice because the 3 will cancel, leaving us with 2. So that's plus 2x to the 3 over 2. And then finally here, I'm dividing by negative a half, and there's a negative sign there, so that will become plus. How do I divide by a half? I turn upside down and multiply, which becomes 2 
times 2 over 1, which is, of course, 4. Now, x to the minus a half, um, you could leave it as x to the minus a half. I'm going to put it as over the square root of x. I think in terms of simplifying, uh, an examiner would accept certainly either that or 4x to the minus a half. You wouldn't have a problem with that. OK, let's uh, look at the third question. Now, this is a little bit nasty, OK? So you need to be uh, rather careful with this one. So we'll do this one in pink. Now, all you know is how to integrate x to the power n. This looks rather like a very complicated function. But of course, if you think of some of the work we did with differentiation of harder functions, then we need to do something with that function first of all by expanding the brackets on the top line. So we need to look at x plus 1 times x plus 2, which of course you can all do, hopefully by now in your head, but Never mind if you put in another step. So we know that's going to be x squared plus 3x plus 2. So that means then the integral is actually x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, although it's all over x to the 4, I'm going to put each part separately over x to the 4. If I do that, you can see now, perhaps fairly quickly, I can do something about this, can't I? Because uh, x squared over x to the 4 will cancel to 1 over x squared, so that's x to the negative 2. I can cancel an x here to give me x cubed, so that's 3x to the minus 3. And finally, 2x to the minus 4. Off we go. Add 1, x to the negative 1 over negative 1. Add 1 to that is negative 2. 3x to the negative 2 over negative 2. And finally, add 1 to this, x to the negative 3 over negative 3 plus c. I need to tidy that up, that's a bit messy. So the first one is minus 1 over x. Now here this is going to become negative as well. The 2 is not a fraction, so nothing has to happen to it. The x to the minus 2 is a reciprocal x squared, so it's 3 over 2x squared. Here, minus 2 over 3 x cubed with the x cubed on the bottom. And then finally, plus c. So that would be a question worth four or even five marks, I should think, in the exam. It's not easy. There's lots of places to go wrong. And uh, practice makes perfect, I'm afraid. OK, so there's some examples then of a range of integration and uh, you now need to go and uh, spend time practicing this and getting used to all of this work with uh, these negative and fractional indices. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.